Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Sam, I be the Ganji during political commentary for the media speaks. Yes, I am aware that it's 420, and uh, again, it, uh, the uh, some of the characters in that have uh, RIP'd. But I do have uh, quite a show for you today. The first thing I want to get to, since we're dealing with the dunce cap, is I tend to deal with this every year, so I'm going to keep it short. But this, to me, is, is kind of funny, and... Hear me out on this. It's, it's the, I guess, the first story, the, 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 the universal dumdy here of the show. Every year we hear people say that Easter is not a Christian religion, but that they're celebrating Ishtar, who is, of course, not the most uh, jovial of gods and uh, certainly not in alignment with the thoughts of Christianity. <coughs> We're getting over a cold. So... <coughs> That's what happens when you don't take your vitamins. Um, the Christians that lived in the area where Ishtar was worshipped, Easter. You always hear today that Christians get pummeled, literally hated, for the Crusades and for not getting along with their neighbors. And the Crusades, in many ways, were a travesty. What some people don't understand, however, is that in most instances... Christians got along with those who they lived with. That's how Christmas came to be. They celebrated the birth of Christ at the same time that their neighbors, who greatly outnumbered them, their great, their pagan neighbors were celebrating holidays. So they said, look, you know, we can't celebrate all the gods and deities and spirits and things that you do, but we would like to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on this day, and then we'll all party together and get along. I just don't want to have to kneel before any other god. That is much the same thing that we're seeing happen here with Easter. Um, one of the ways you can know this for sure, by the way, is that um, there are many breasts on Easter. Um, one of the names of God is El Shaddai, which is multi-breasted one, meaning able to feed many, able to supply for many. Um, it's not a perverted saying. But my bigger point being is that it wasn't that a religion was stolen and dubbed Christianity. It was uh, coexisting. You always see little bumper stickers coexist, and yet, you know, to this day, you have the uh, you have that myth circulating regarding Christianity. So I wanted to throw that out there. But friends, that we we get much dumber than that. We get incredibly dumb. For instance, I was going to give this here the Dove's Cap of the Month award, <coughs> and did not. Because I do believe the situation may be about to right itself. But um, here, $1,361 out of 100 So basically, he, he it's a GoFundMe page for a veteran and a true patriot, someone who I have marched side by side with for gun rights. Um, Bill Baker, he writes on his GoFundMe page. You can find it. There are yeah, 25 days left. Emergency home repairs needed, please help. Now, this is why you tune into the Dunce Cap of the Month show, because you want to know who the stupidest and most dishonest people are, right? You want to know who to avoid? Listen to this. They bought a, uh, him and his wife bought a home. It was purchased with a VA loan. It was listed as completely renovated from top to bottom. We were scammed badly. This house was not <clears throat> completely renovated. It was completely covered up and made to look like it was while hiding all the damage underneath. The short time we have lived here, we have had to take out a loan to completely redo the bathroom because it was not done correctly at all, along with everything else. There are spots all over this house that have no sheathing or insulation. I don't know why they did this. I guess only having vinyl siding is good enough now. There is severe foundation damage, and it was covered up and purposefully, I would add, hidden. This damage has been there for a long time, and the water has been getting in underneath the house for a long time. Our kitchen floor and bedroom floor, he writes, is starting to sink. We have mold underneath our bedroom floor and is starting to show on the interior of our bedroom closet. 
my wife's wedding dress is probably completely ruined. I did send them a link to try to fix that. I have lost many clothes, including my blue dress shoes. And he goes on and on and on and on. Basically, if I read this whole thing to you and everything that was wrong with this house, you wouldn't just send them a, uh, the, the people that caused this. You would not just send them a dunce cap. You would be tempted to send them something more. You wouldn't, but you would be tempted. So, friends, I'm going to encourage you to go and check that out and have a look at that. Again, Bill Baker, go fund me. Emergency repairs needed. Please help. Remember, friends, he is a vet. So, all right, I'm going to get on to even stupider stories. I get it. That one was more malicious. A malicious house owner selling to a vet who didn't have a lot of money. Okay, how about we just go full-fledged stupid then? But how about we go so stupid that if I'd have known where to send this dunce cap, these geniuses here uh, would have definitely got it. And that goes without saying. Listen to this, friends. It's from uh, Cleveland19news.com, but I wouldn't suggest going there because it keeps refreshing. Annoyingly so. <coughs> you, Claire. A mother and her son are in custody after causing a ruckus at a Walmart Wednesday night. Police said their dog chipped in too. You can't make this up. The Euclid Police Department identified 46-year-old Lisa Smith. Now, friends, she looks like she's 146. Okay, I'm 46. Maybe, you know, in some ways I don't look it. Thank God if that's the case. But this woman, I'd guess she was like 65, maybe pushing 70. I'm going to go screen share here for those of you on uh, Google and uh, those of you up there, I'm not going to be able to do it, but you can find it. Just hit the... Uh, Hit the uh, link, like I said, at cleveland19.com. Woman does karate. Son gets nude. Dog eats cornbread mixed from Walmart. I guarantee there's not too many headlines like that. You'll find it right away, even if you're a Clinton supporter. Um, her 25-year-old son was also ensnared in this, Benny Van, and uh, investigators said the dog's name is Bo. Reese's bonding officer said they found Smith yelling in the doorway trying to summon Bo. Smith allegedly brought Bo into the store without a leash, so he easily ditched his owner and started running up to unsuspecting customers. So it's not even, you know, a trained dog that can be walked that way. Last night, shortly before 8.30 p.m., officers were called to Walmart for a retail theft in progress. They were told a... They were told that... They typoed this. Bo was doing that. Smith began tearing apart store displays and placing them in her sharpening cart. Police said Walmart staff asked her to leave and she complied. Police said she left the store to perform karate moves in the parking lot. Bo, on the other hand, there's no chance that math or anything could have possibly been involved here. Bo, on the other hand, had not been brought to heel by the time anyone found him. He was on his way out of the store with a box of Jiffy Cornbread Muffin Mix in his mouth. Good doggy, doggy. Does your dog bat? No, monsieur. So he reaches down, pets the dog. I thought you said your dog does not bat. That is not my dog. I get, it's the only impersonation you get. I don't, I don't do them anymore. Uh, police arrested Smith, but it wasn't without a fight. He allegedly kicked out a patrol car window when he finally got into custody. You think they would secure those more as you know, it happens all the time, but, you know, they don't learn. Meanwhile, police said Van was running amok inside the store. He allegedly took off all of his clothes, which is probably a sight if you saw the same picture I did that nobody wanted to see. In clear view of the Walmart and exposed himself to everyone around him. Fortunately for them, he tried to cover himself by putting on the clothes Walmart had on the racks. Even so, police said he didn't try to purchase them. So, that also is a crime. Officers approached and commanded him to end the madness, but he refused. Authorities said Van even used a scooter in an attempt to run over an officer. Because we all know how painfully deadly scooters can be. I mean, so, you know, this was a well-thought-out plan. Again, no chance that meth or drugs like that could be uh, a factor at all. Law enforcement uh, physically stopped the scooter, imagine that, and took him into custody. Van faces charges for lewd and lascivious behavior, I can say that easily, disorderly conduct, and retail theft. Smith is charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and misdemeanor bail jumping. Uh, an important part, this is what I wondered about too. Bo, however, was not charged. Police issued him a 
warning for the theft. So there you go, friends. At least they have a sense of humor. Two stories left before we get to the absolute big L dum de dum do what you're waiting for. This one is from Weasel Zippers. Can't make that up either. Vandals attacked statue recognizing a World War II he hero, thinking it's a Confederate monument. Now, I, I, I'm going to speak to my lefty friends here. Of course, everybody on the right, uh, I would assume conservatives, libertarians, they have enough brains that they already know this. So I would like to speak to my friends on the left. Um, during the Confederate War, the North fought the South. During World War II, we prevented the entire world from speaking German. And I'm not saying that you should attack Confederate sites, because I don't think that you should. But if you are so inclined to do such stupidity, and that is what it is, you may wish to make sure that what you are attacking is really a Confederate monument. <coughs> oh, God. At least then you're not the stupidest person in the prison cell. You can always claim self-virtue and see if that prevents you from an anal probe. Um, not only ridiculous leftists, but historically ignorant. This is from WNCN, also Dunn, North Carolina. The controversy surrounding Confederate monuments has resulted in the vandalism of statues across the South. Never even thought it would affect us in any way, said Mark Johnson, curator of the General William C. Lee Airborne Division in Dunn. Notice the name Lee. Not every Lee, believe it or not, there has been more than one Lee in American history. China, too, I'm sure. Johnson thought for sure that the General William C. Lee would be safe from chaos. This is the hometown grown boy that he turned out to be an international hero of World War II. So to come and try to destroy his statue is an insult to everybody, said Johnson. Please say someone dows the statue in some kind of flammable liquid and set it on fire. I think it was a big mistake, said Johnson. Why would you do something like this? It really just irritates people. So basically, I hate the I hate the Confederacy. Oh my God. And I hate Nazis. So you just defaced the statue of people that defeated Nazism. This is the world we live in, friends. This is the ultimate stupidity-laden world that we live in. And that brings us to what you are waiting for the most. Yes, I know the much-beloved Dunce Camp of the Month Award. If you would like to donate to the show, you may do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal, and all of the money that you give to me goes towards a better show. I'm only doing a couple shows a month now. Um, basically, all of the people that have helped me with it aren't, and it's just not the same. I don't know how to put it. It's just not the same. So I'm not doing the characters and things, but I am keeping the Fukushima update as well as the um, Fukushima update and the dunce cap, obviously. So, who, who's been dumber than saying that Easter wasn't a Christian religion? Who's dumber than defacing a World War II monument? How about the people that have been wrong for two years? How about the fact that the Russian collusion scandal has cost millions upon millions of dollars, that whether you agree with me or like Trump or don't like Trump, you paid for an investigation that revealed nothing, that revealed that Donald Trump was actually innocent. Who should pay? How about the people that cheerleaded the hoax investigation? Okay, uh, you can find... Uh, it's, it's listed as uh, Tucker Carlson, two years of Russia hysteria is over. It was posted uh, two days ago. He goes into great detail on how, whether or not you like Trump or not, the entire thing was a massive, undescribably expensive waste of time and money, which you, the taxpayer, has paid for. So how about we pick the most egregious to give the Dunce Cap of the Month award to. And friends, that would be CNN. So here's what I've done. Here is their uh, here is their hat. It says, of course, Dunce. Look at my magic ball. She looks really good. I was very proud of myself there. The magic ball says, nope. 
the crystal ball sees no collusion. And then, of course, <coughs> this individual there looks a little bit like Hank Hill, I guess. Didn't mean it to, but it does. CNN. CNN pronounced fake news. The CNN is silent. Okay, they're going to get mailed that. And then they are also going to get mailed this certificate, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. I'm going to read it to you first. And this one came out really nice, so you're definitely going to want to see it. I'll go screen share for the uh, Google people, YouTube subscribers. Hello there, Media Speaks. Uh, if it wants to let me share today, yes, I would like to share. Imagine that. Okay. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes without reservation to the fake news masters at CNN. You have not only shamed yourself, but you have shamed the entire nation, I wrote. For that, and for failing to retract, your network has earned the white hat. Now, you'll, you'll find that when I go to this, exactly what I'm referring to on how wonderful this came out as far as the detail in it. I was very, very happy with this. I have to disconnect the camera. Look at that. That is a, that's a really nice award, wouldn't you say? All right, friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Uh, Sam I.B. DeGange, I am signing off here, Ooh, saying bye-bye. Make sure you donate if you can, friends. Like I said, I've been posting a lot less. Uh, it has to do with a number of things. But, uh, hey, happy Easter. And if you have someone who loves you and you're spending it, maybe you spend every Easter with the people that you love. Maybe Maybe that's normal and that's what you always do. That's great. But make sure you cherish it. Make sure you take a moment to think about what it would be like if something happened to them. Because there are a lot of people who had a, uh, throughout their lives, I'm sure, have had a plethora of people for all the holidays. And then that changes overnight. And it seems like it never would, but it does. So I guess what I'm saying is to, to make sure that you cherish those who you are with on this fine day, friends. Good night, God bless, and happy Easter.